I no. suppose we're all sort of not looking forward, but bracing for those visitor arrival numbers over uh, January and in particularly February. But how bad are you anticipating this could be? You know, it's it's really serious. Um, it's it's going to be difficult to ascertain how big an impact it has, but. Uh, whereas the Qantas business is, is quite well hedged in terms of very strong domestic, uh, domestic side of their operations in terms of throughput and profitability from mm. an international tourism perspective, we are quite leveraged towards China. It's been a real success story. It's been decades of government to government successful engagement as well as the industry side. So it's $12 billion out of a, a $48 billion a year earnings, earnings sort of framework. So it's, it's a significant uh, part of our industry and it's been a very strongly growing part of our industry um, un until probably more recently. Because the problem is not just the lockdown in China and visitors you know who otherwise would have visited being prevented from leaving the country or you know being prevented from entering Australia but even before that with the bushfires you know these horrible images of burning koalas of the country on fire I mean global visitors would be turned off by that. Yeah they will be um, I mean we're a very resilient sector and there's a lot of work being done behind the scenes and just as I mean our industry is really probably over uh, overperformed in the past 10-15 mm. years we've got a long-term strategy we've got you know great airline support with Qantas but also we've got open skies so a lot of competition of which Qantas does well but also you know, large carriers are also competing for a, for a growing pie. A lot of Australians travel so we've had this nice two-way type of market which is growing well above um, GDP. The, the, the challenge will be is, is what does coronavirus mean for individual businesses, um, households and where Australia sits on their bucket list in terms of um, visitation and that's that's the challenge. At the moment, I think the jury's out. Uh, clearly, there's a travel ban in place um, in terms of China, between China and Australia, and that's up for a weekly review. But uh, the, the sense is that that will continue for some period of time. We're overall, overall, we're actually very optimistic that we can bounce back as a sector, but it is troubling. And uh, you know, we believe we've seen some falls in markets such as Japan, right. uh, even New Zealand. And so these, these are, you know, should be more resilient in the current market. Simon, we're getting the latest headlines out of Japan. Local media NHK saying that two people from the Diamond Ship uh, crews that was quarantined in Yokohama have died from coronavirus. Of course, they've been quarantined for over two weeks and we had seen more than 600 infections. NHK now saying that two people from that Yokohama cruise have died from the coronavirus infection. We had heard from the Chief Cabinet Secretary Yoshihida Suga earlier today saying that the quarantine was effective, that infections were gradually falling. Now NHK saying that two people have died from that cruise ship, one in seven people had been infected. But Simon, we continue to see these infections spreading now, especially on these cruise ships and really a surprising fallout with uh, a few of those cruise ships that have really received tons of scrutiny over potential infections. What does it say about the future of Australian tourism and how important uh, the tourism sector is for the Australian economy overall? And how big of an impact do you see going forward in the next few months? Yeah, it's a great question. Look, I mean, the Australian tourism industry, it's, uh, it's our largest services export. It's a, it's a touch over 3% of our GDP. The forward planning will see that move towards 4% of our GDP. It's significant industry and employs a million Australians. Uh, I mean, the public health response by the Australian government has been second to none. I mean, there's 15, 15 cases of coronavirus uh, in country, which were which were visitors from abroad, which came in were captured uh, when the I guess the wall came down in terms of the travel ban out of mainland China, and they've been really well managed, and in essence have been managed through the system. We've had no deaths from coronavirus here, um, so I, in, I actually think we're really well placed. It's a matter of you know, can the virus be uh, well contained within China? There's obviously a significant amount of effort and resource around that. The Australian government is right across this. Uh, industry is well appraised. Uh, we actually, the position we have is that at some point we do need to see the travel ban lifted between us, Australia and China, but it needs to be lifted when it's good and ready and that we are able to pivot very quickly and get back into that market because it's a significant one and it, it should respond well, as Alan Joyce alluded to, it should respond well, such as it, at the SARS situation, it should come back quite quickly. But, you know, we've, we've, got, to, we've got to keep an eye to the fact that we're in a, a new normal here and, uh, and, you know, people may well not, not travel. Um, as much as they were, and we are a long-haul destination, particularly from an international perspective, and we need to take that into consideration in terms of some future planning.
Haven't people already stopped traveling a little bit because of the ongoing months of the bushfires in Australia? Well, in, in, in essence, it's, it's become a flatter market. I mean, uh, uh, regrettably, our tourism data is, is whilst it's very, it, they get to get it together very quickly, it's a little bit back, uh, backward facing. So we won't really see the, the numbers come through until you know, probably another three or four weeks. So we, we've been calling on it from an industry perspective that we really get a good feel for the existing numbers. Um, you know, it has flattened, and there's no question that domestically within Australia, January is a very strong travel month where Australians get around their own country and and, and po popular pockets were restricted because of the fires. So a lot of that was drive tourism, but obviously there was some flying there as well. So I, I, we're quite optimistic. I mean, we, 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 I mean, there's a lot of pessimism going around. I mean, we're, we're, a, we're a, a people and a country that loves travel, both receiving visitors and us getting around. So we're just going to... And the fact that coronavirus is not... Is not here, um, it's been it's been trapped. I think puts sets us up very well for the for that rebound, uh, and that mm. includes the international visitors. It's interesting. It's almost fatalistic. This idea that Australia's fortunes are so tied to China, and obviously that's where the economic boom has come from. But for example, we had record Indian tourists arriving in Australia. How much effort is being made in, in terms of promotion and investment in diversifying beyond China? Well, there's a lot there. Uh, I mean, so China has been the miracle market for us, without question. And then. The, the Indias, the Indonesias, um, and the US has actually been a very strong performing market. It's been up about 5% compound over recent years. So um, Tourism Australia and the Australian government, I mean, TA is the marketing arm, have always had a suite of um, markets to look at. Uh, and the underpinning element of Australian tourism has been the domestic side of it. So it's a, a $150 billion Australian uh, visitor economy, and about $100 billion of that is the domestic market of Australians mm. travelling to and through their own country. So it's always had that underpinning, and really it's been this international growth in the last five to ten years that we're now starting to see it develop so well. I need to ask about climate, because reputationally Australia's taken a hit after the bushfires. We're now getting this new report that previously seen to be pristine parts of the Great Barrier Reef are seeing bleaching as well. Is the fact that there's no sort of coherent energy and climate policy from the government hurting the tourism side of things as well? Yeah, it's, it's going to hurt longer term. Um, it's hurt currently in terms of our image. We, we had a very poor image portrayed of our country, completely different um, and completely reversed to what we're so used to seeing and what mm. people that know our country are so used to seeing. This beautiful, natural, pristine environment was going up in flames. Now, the reality was it wasn't quite the case, but you know, six million plus hectares of land and, and hundreds of thousands of native wildlife were lost and of course we lost over 30 lives as well so it's tragic and we know there's a brand issue there and the government is listening but we, we're agitating as well as an industry we need to see a much more frank discussion around these things climate neutral uh, so carbon neutrality as a destination needs to be an aspiration for us as an industry and we're working towards that uh, the reality is you do need to burn some carbon if you travel on a long-haul flight here. So we've got to work at ways of how that's mitigated in terms of that destination. And it's one of the challenges and indeed the opportunities we've got to look at.